John, it's been a while, man. How, how, how does it feel to be back and, and, and to be getting a lot, a lot of love, it seemed like, from the crowd? I mean, you've had your, your critics along the way, but it seems like they still got your back. Yeah, for sure. It feels great to be back. I'm super grateful. Uh, I miss this game so much. I miss all you guys so much. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, yeah, man, just unbelievable, man. Great energy in here right now. And, uh, very exciting. You said you felt like you kind of owed it to the fans to take this fight even though it's not your thing. Can you kind of explain that a little bit? Why do you feel like you owed them? Yeah, you know, um, well over the last year it's been really tough to be a Josh Jones fan for sure. I, I've definitely, I definitely haven't made it easy. Um, and I wanted to do something positive. I wanted to um, save the day for these guys. You know, uh, UFC 151 happened a long time ago. It's something that some people still hold against me uh, to this day. So um, getting in here, uh, for all these fans, you know, saving this card, um, I felt as if it would just it'd give me some brownie points with my fans. <laughs> Jones, is it like you control your demo inside? Excuse me? Is it like you control your demo inside? I don't understand. It's like you controlled your demon inside of you. Do you feel like you control the demons inside of yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do I feel like... I don't, I don't really think I had too many demons. Um, you know, I, I feel I feel alive. I feel uh, as if I've grown a lot. I feel um, as if everything happens for a reason. And we're all on these different journeys and, and different, different paths in life. And, you know, we're all going to... You know, live life differently. So I feel good. I feel happy with who I am today and where I'm at today. Hey, John, what was your reaction yesterday with McGregor that tweet saying he's retiring and getting pulled from UFC 200? Um, I don't think he's retired. I don't think he's going to retire. You know, just a few days ago on his uh, Instagram, he said, uh, "Hungry like day one," and so um, a guy like Connor, you know, he is a he's a fighter and he is a winner. And uh, I don't think he would want to go out on a loss. You know, I think if he doesn't fight again, you know, his legacy is really that Diaz fight. Uh, so I'm pretty sure he'll be back. Yeah. And hats off to him for standing up for what he believes is right. You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, business is business, and um, you know, the guy obviously has respect for himself and his talents. And uh, and, and you know, fights like this will help fighters in the future. So uh, I respect. I, I respect. Uh, his balls, I guess. Well, that, that sounds bad. I won't say I respect his balls. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I, I respect, uh, you know, his, his willingness to, to fight for what's right. Did, 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 you, did you understand, kind of, you know, after what you went through with UFC 151? Which one are you guys going to headline? John respects kind of balls. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do it. Did you, did you kind of sympathize with him a little bit, you know, making that stand? Because, you know, you had to go through that with 151, you know, the, this kind of like the venomous reaction you got. Maybe, you know, it wasn't really deserved. Didn't yeah, I, I don't really sympathize. Um, you know, Connor knows what he's doing, and um, like I said, I, I believe he'll be back. So, you know, and Connor's made a lot of money, so I'm sure he's in a position right now where he doesn't need to to uh, jump up and fight at the next event. You know, I'm sure he can afford to take a long time off. So, so yeah. He'll be back. In these, in these you situations, have, you have, you know, whenever there's been any issue, you haven't been all that willing to address it. This time, you're talking about your sobriety and all that. What, what changed? Well, I guess what's changed is, you know, everything uh, is out there for the public to see for themselves. So there's really no hiding anything anymore, and it, it's really freeing to, to just be so open and honest with, uh, with all the fans. Um, you know, I believe, I believe uh, somewhere, someone out there uh, will draw strength from my struggles, and they'll see the way that I've dealt with them and I've come back from them. And, uh, they'll find some type of strength and inspiration from it. And uh, me knowing that, you know, I really am not only fighting for my own life, uh, but I feel like I'm fighting uh, to inspire someone else in the future. So that gives me uh, an extra added strength, I guess. Let me follow up one question on that. If I could, you know, addiction is obviously a lifelong battle, right? Well, how do you, you know, are you getting an ultra with that in terms of, because, you know, it's never an easy thing to stay on. You know, you've mentioned your sobriety, how many days it is, and I don't know how many it is right now. But, right, yeah. you know, are, is somebody with you to kind of help you through that process to fight the fight, so to speak? No, no, I, I have been doing it by myself. I know I get a lot of backlash for my one day rehab stint. Um, but, you know, right now I feel, I feel 
great and I've been doing a great job with it. Um, I think I'm around seven months sober and um, you know from what I hear you know uh, rehab or, or, or addiction you know it's a thing that you take one day at a time and uh, as of right now I'm doing awesome with it and just really really proud of myself and, and, uh, and I hope you know to be like I said an inspiration to someone else to know that you can do it and if I can do it you can do it too so let's say John. you don't get stretched at all in this next fight DC's ready for UFC 200 and they need to save you could you step in is that something you'd be interested in absolutely I, I'm, I'm I, I, I totally step in uh, to UFC 100 and fill in that, that main event or co main event slot. Main event slot. <laughs> <laughs> what about UFC 100 now 200? Yeah, I, I don't think. Uh, is there anybody else? I think he might both? be. Done. Unless GSP fights. Unless GSP, yeah, I would love to be uh, the first guy to fight at UFC 100 and 200. John, what's it like to battle with the idea the that only guy. you might be your own worst enemy? Um, you know, I have been my own worst enemy. Um, you know, I've done a lot of great things uh, throughout my career. A lot of great things for my friends and family. I've changed a lot of people's lives. Um, but I've also gotten in my own way. And, um, you know, it's I don't really battle with the idea. You know, it's it, the proof is in what's happened, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've grown. And, and I can't really beat myself up for my past because my past has made me the stronger guy that I am today. Uh, and so I'm grateful for my struggles. You know, I, I, I've, I've made it through them and, and I've been able to grow a lot. So, you know, I, I said after one of my fights, I, I thank my fiance's mom um, after one of my fights because she taught me that adversity is the opportunity to grow. And, you know, I, I wasn't growing for a while, and, and now I've grown tremendously, so I'm grateful for my struggles. You've always been open about respecting Anderson Silva and wanting to break his record. Was that one of the most difficult parts of this process, was having your gotcha, second record stolen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, at the end of the day, the way I look at it is, you know, people will, people will, they'll know. They all know. If I go on for the next uh, several years, winning championships, you know, the argument and, and the records, um, the argument will, will, will change. You know, people just say, hey, you know, John had a uh, setback in his career, technically, and she still has that record. But John Jones says, you know, he went on to win, let's say, 10, 10 more world titles, whatever. So I just think. You know, through time, every, everything else will take care of itself. How excited are you to do what you are uh, initially known to get it back in there and just compete? Give me a second, guys. Give me a second. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to get back in there and uh, to show some of the new fans why there's so much hype around me. To show some of the new fans why I'm number one on that pound for pound ranking. Um, and I'm also excited to get out there and remind the old old fans what I'm capable of. So, um, a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure for sure. Um, but at the same time, I'm just like really just, just grateful, really excited. And, uh, yeah. So, I remember having butterflies in the cage, and do you feel like you might kind of feel that feeling like this is your first time or something like that? Yeah, you know, honestly, um, the years that I fought four times in one year, I had the same level of butterflies, you know, I had butterflies um, every fight, you know, if you're not nervous, then that's a problem, you know, if you're just Mr. Oh, this is going to be easy, piece of cake, you know, that's, that's when uh, you're in a dangerous situation, so um, definitely nervous, I always am for every fight, but at the same time, confident, because I know that nerve is what makes me compete at a really high level. John, do you remember Dude. the moment you realized you had to change? Was there like a rock bottom moment or a conversation you had with somebody where you're like, this is not working? Um, moment I realized I had to change. Yeah, man, you know, honestly, big moment for me was the night Anthony Johnson and Daniel Cormier fought for my light heavyweight championship, and I saw uh, DC walk away with it. And in my mind, I, I beat both of those guys. And, um, you know, I was at home with my wife, and, um, and I thought to myself, man, you know, here I am, um, possibly one of the best fighters to ever play this sport. And, and I'm here at my house without a belt, without a sponsor, you know, um, just completely wasting talent. You know, I, I, I should be in this arena in front of thousands of people, in front of millions of viewers at home, but I'm sitting here in my kitchen watching this fight. I'm like, you know, 
by myself, you know, with my family. So that night really is, is what made me realize, okay, John, you are ruining something very special. And, uh, and it's time for you to pull your head out of your ass and, uh, and do things right and, and, and really uh, ace uh, the rest of this story, the rest of this book. So that's what I'm going to do. Your brothers are professional football players, obviously. What was their advice for um, um, you? know. Their advice to me, let's see. You know, they didn't really give me that much advice. They were just extremely supportive. You know, they were extremely supportive throughout the whole thing. Um, they know one thing about me is when my back's against the wall, that's when I really give my best, my absolute best. You know, when I'm comfortable, sometimes I coast and I, and I make things difficult on myself. You know, I take things for granted. Um, but when my back's against the wall, when it's really time for me to dig deep, um, that's when I, I show my true self and and and, and, uh, and I do my best work. So they are, they are they kind of set back and was wondering, okay, John John is fired up now. You know, John's back is against the wall. He's he's at a low point now. Like, let's see what he does. You know. So you know, I felt like a lot of a lot of people in my life started gravitating towards me closer because they saw the inspiration come back. They saw, they saw that fire in my eyes. They saw that I had something to prove again. And they wanted to be around it. You know, a lot of my friends started to lose weight just hanging out with me, you know, because they saw me getting healthy and, and powerlifting every day. You know, a lot of my friends started to just come up in life, you know, because because of the energy that I was giving off, you know. And and that, that made me feel good. So, yeah. So, yeah, you know. Seeing Johnson, you know, fight. How much does it motivate you or bug you seeing DC hold that title right now? You know, it doesn't really. I guess it's a little more motivating, uh, but it's not. It doesn't really bother me. You know, I'm, I'm really aware with everything that's happened. You know, I took myself out of the competition being a knucklehead and uh, and gave and gave DC an opportunity of a lifetime to finally capture that belt. Um, this may sound weird, but in a way I'm happy for him to uh, have gotten to taste, taste the opportunity. Because, you know, outside of the fact that I don't like him, he's really not a bad guy. And, you know, watching him, he makes a great champion. You know, he, he has a clean image, you know, seems like a family guy, he works really hard and everything like that. So, you know, me not being in there, you would want to see a guy like DC have the belt. So a part of me, in a weird way, is happy that he got the opportunity. Um, but now, He's had it long enough. I hope he, uh, you know, I hope he enjoyed it. It's time to pay his rental fee and get that ass whooped when I uh, finally face him. Maybe at UFC 100 or 200. If you say, guys, you gotta give John some time to go sign his It's because, um, really, because you know he doesn't like me. He, you know, <laughs> that's that's really what it boils down to. You know, the, the way the whole thing got started was, you know, me telling the guy in a joking manner that I can take you down. You know, I could take you down any day. He got so pissed off. Let me tell him the truth. You know, as of right now, he still hasn't taken me down. I think I've taken him down five times. So, you know, the whole thing got started with me telling him what I thought was true, which I've proven to be true. And he decided to hate me from then on. And uh, now I just don't like him anymore either. I believe once I beat him the second time, the whole feud's going to go away. Because it's going to be like, all right. Yeah, you're better than me, I can admit it. You know, I'll go home. And There's no one left in that After division, John. Press was here last month. I, go to heavy I, I saw Art backstage kind of eyeing up uh, DC. Yeah. Were you worried if saw your brother was going to kind of... No, yeah, my brother, he definitely would fight for me in a heartbeat. You know, we were like best friends. And, uh... He was kind of like yeah, like he was mad. Yeah, he yeah he was pretty fired up. I think I think Arthur feels as if he could have been a fighter. I believe he could have been a fighter. So when he's around fighters, naturally his chest is just a little bit bigger, his shoulders are just a little bit wider, and it doesn't take much to to want to you know defend his little brother. If you if you remember when I fought uh, against uh, uh, Brandon Vera, I got into it with Brandon on the stage, and Arthur was right there, you know, choking Brandon. So yeah, definitely don't mess with me with my big brother's around. Hey guys, thank you guys so much for your time. God bless you all. And uh, it's good to see you all again. Thank you. Hey, sign his photo.